is Jason with the Rotor Boss Rotary Attachments. Uh, I wanted to do this video for uh, a couple different reasons. I've had some people get a hold of me. Uh, they made messages and left posts as well as uh, phone calls about their settings. The rotary's not turning. Uh, the rotary's not doing what it's supposed to do. And then come to find out that light burn has reverted back to 360 or their stock settings which is 360 step rotation and then whatever the, the rotary diameter is they have said I don't I don't recall off the top of my head but the biggest uh, concern that I have is with the the settings being reverted and after talking to light burn themselves they said that if you start light burn without a laser present or turned on when light burn starts up it's looking for information from the laser if the laser is not on light burn is going to revert your uh, rotary setting to 360 here and then whatever the, the diameter roller diameter is that it, that it has on there um, so their recommendation is or their solution to that is make sure that your laser is on then you want to start up light burn and select it from your list of your devices here if you have multiple devices. Um, other than that, uh, this video is to kind of address that and also tell you how to avoid this issue or to recover from this issue as well as switching between different types of cups uh, without having to use adapters or writing stuff down and remembering uh, all the different stuff that you may need for a given object that you're doing. So the first thing you want to do when you're setting up the rotary is uh, in here, I use, this is like a one-time thing just to make sure that you have roller selected. If you're running a Thunder, you don't have to worry about rotary enable because it's irrelevant. If you're running a Y-axis machine where the rotary plugs into the Y, then you would definitely need to make sure you have your rotary enabled in order for the rotor to work and then you also have it here um, in your your system tray um, you can go ahead and do your initial setup and, and settings and everything here uh, for this uh, the, the starting point at least for for thunder just as a reference is 4400 this is for a low roller so the roller diameter is 44 millimeters which is about 1.7 something inches um, and that's you know what I've got set up here because that's what I use in this particular machine um, the object diameter and circumference I get this all the time it does not matter for a roller rotary and light burn has so graciously added this little note in here this is not required it's just a useful calculator so what this this actually does is if you add your um, cup size which in this case is a 20 ounce which is 88 millimeters it gives you the circumference of the cup so what this does is when you're doing your scale setup your one inch by one inch two inch by two inch or however you do it once you get that set up this number here is what you base your template off of so you'll make your template size 276.46 millimeters tall because that's the direction of the rotation or the direction that you're engraving on the cup, that should get you your 360 degree rotation uh, when you do your design. The test function here, where you're you're setting up your 360, um, that's all well and good, but again, that is not a function of a roller. That's more a chuck setup. So you can use it like a lot of people do for doing wraps and things like that. But if you set it up this way and you go back to do a scale design, it's going to be off every time. And that's a lot of the reasons why a lot of people say, hey, just increase your, your y-axis by 10% or whatever. Um, they're basically compensating for something that, that was done improperly for the use that you're trying to make of it. Um, and vice versa, if you do a 1-inch or 2-inch square test, and then you try to do a 360, it's going to be wrong every time. Um, they're two different things for two different functions. The test is not for a roller, it's for a chuck, but you can use it for the roller, but understanding that that is not the be-all, end-all 
um, setup for the rotary, especially when all you're really going to do is regular engravings, double side engravings, things like that. Um, if you're doing wraps, okay, you can do it either way, but it's two different setups with two different functions. So just keep that in mind. Um, then on here, you know, some people, if you're running the Y axis, you'll see the Y axis highlighted. A axis is the thunder, so it's going to have an A axis. Sometimes they'll have Y, but it still functions. I don't know why it does that, um, but uh, we found that it works either way. So once you're done with that, click OK. So let's say now we have everything set up. And if you go to Edit, Machine Settings, you'll see your the only numbers you need to worry about are right here. Before I recommend you make your changes, you can do it in rotary setup. Just keep in mind the diameter and circumference of the object doesn't matter. Um, so we have 4550, which is the baseline number for my setup, and that gets me anything from like a shot glass to 30 ounce cup. You may have slight deviation, but if you're just doing a normal engraving, it's that you're not going to notice that by looking at it that you're off a millimeter or two. Um, but if you need specifically a set number or um, if you're doing wraps, this is where you'd want to dial it in per each cup or each design because it is so crucial that you have those steps set up properly so to make sure that you get your full rotation um, without overlaps or empty seams. So in my case, we have 4550 baseline. So let's say I want to do a, um, I don't know, a wine glass where the, the mouth of the wine glass is smaller than the body that you're engraving. Kind of like a wine tumbler, but, you know, a little bit different. So the settings would be a little bit different. So let's say uh, we have to go to 4150. Um, let's say this is our, our number that we need for the, the wine glasses. So we're going to write that to the machine. Now the machine knows that that's what it needs to obtain to get the engraving to come out properly. So um, let's say we'll get back to the 360 thing real quick. If, let's say you, you open up Lightburn and your settings are 360 and then your diameter is whatever the arbitrary number is that, that populates. Um, this can happen like we discussed earlier. But if it does happen, if you go back, in this case, what we've done is you want to, um, once you have your, your number, let's say it's 4550, that was our base number, so we want to go to save to file. You want to create a folder. I know this isn't in the folder, but I wanted to, to, to show this. Um, your rotary cup files. This is where you'll put all these files. And then what I do is once you do your initial setup, you save a baseline rotary file or whatever you want to call it. And this is your number to revert back to if something happens, if you do an update and things change, or if it reverts to 360 like so many people have seen. Um, you have this number to go off of. So you just load that file. I don't want to replace it, but this is where you would save it. Once it's saved, um, let's say you start up light burn and it's 360. I'm going to write it. You can read it to verify it's 360. And now you want to load your baseline file because you need to get your stuff back. Your file loads up and all your settings follow. Um, so now let's say we're doing a, uh, a wine glass. So we're 4150. Uh, that's our number. Write it to the machine. You also want to go here to save the file. So so you're going to long stem wine glass. Save it. Now that's saved. So let's say we went ahead and did our wine glasses and now we want to do a 30 ounce water bottle. We just go here, find our 30 ounce water bottle. Boom, settings change. So this way you don't have to have a bunch of adapters that you got to keep track of and pay more money for all that stuff. And also you don't have to write a bunch of stuff down. It's all saved here for you. So let's say we're done with that. Now we want to go to our 15-ounce wine tumbler. 
go to that numbers change so all your settings are here um, if you're doing a bunch of um, different types of stuff that require different numbers or if you need specific numbers to do let's say wraps or whatever you'd want to make your changes get everything dialed in and then save your file for uh, a wrap uh, let's say a 30 ounce polar wrap all right so you're gonna save that so next time you come back and you need to do a 30 ounce polar wrap boom load it you're done you can go ahead and start engraving um, so once all that's done uh, if, if you want to go back or whenever you, you do whatever you can go back to your base settings write it to machine and then hit OK um, so <clears throat> another thing too is to do uh, line setting or line engraving things like that on the cup uh, it can be done you can do it through your vendor settings but I'm going to have a different video on that talking about that specifically on how to make those adjustments uh, on, and to show you how I do it and kind of go from there so on this video like I said this is this is how I do it personally this is how I recommend it and the way the setup is per the manual is how I suggest doing a setup for for your basic stuff and for anything really the wraps and double sided um, because in the like I said in the machine settings or not the machine settings but up here in the rotary settings this number right here is what you're going to use for a template no need to do a 360 test just set up your templates to match and then you're good to go um, so I hope this helps anybody that, that has seen this or had problems with this or um, you know pulling their hair out because they can't they don't remember the settings that they had and, and things like that uh, because this does happen occasionally I've had it happen like once maybe twice um, but uh, this is how I do it to fix it there might be an easier way to do it if someone has any in inputs on this on a better way or more efficient way to do it please let me know I'd love to look into it and see and maybe even do a video on it at a later date um, but if you don't mind, like, share, subscribe, and uh, comment if you have any on uh, any inputs you have on this or questions you might have on this. And if I can't get you the answer, or if I don't have the answer, I will definitely uh, find someone that, that will have the answer, and we can address it at that point. So, I appreciate you watching this video. If it was helpful, please uh, give a like, You know, subscribe to the channel. And uh, we got more videos coming out. I plan on doing a lot more like this. And also, we'll be doing a, a big setup video showing you the differences between the 360 setup and a, and a regular setup and how, how the, you know, what the benefits are from one to the other. But anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.